Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'll be demonstrating on how we can plan and design a surgical guide using Atomica software suite from start to finish, starting with planning and with with the our with our software, the Atomica Implant Planner, and moving our way to guide designing our surgical guide using the Atomica guide design. So let's go ahead and start. So before starting, all you need to do is to sign up to have access to the software. All you need to do is to sign up right here using your personal email or you can connect with Google and have access to the software right away. Okay, so let's go ahead and sign in using my credentials. let's take a very simple case. So as you may know that our software supports single DICOM files and multiple DICOM files and what we have here is an example of multiple DICOM files. Our software brings it all together and render it pretty quickly and smoothly as you can see. On the right hand side is the patient information along with the information of this can being used to take to take the x-ray and on the left hand side is the patient information that you might be able to edit. Okay, so the very first step that we all need to do before planning is we need to browse and choose a file path in which we're going to save our file, our planning file, where everything else will be saved later on. So let's name that demo case. It's saved under our format, which we call it Atom, right here. Let's save that. To save the file and move forward to the next step, you need to select adjust DICOM. So when you select that, we'll move forward to adjusting our scan in which if the patient uh, moved away or another while taking the scan, the, the scan is tilted, uh, not in the correct position, misoriented. So we can adjust and utilize these different cross sections to be able to adjust the orientation in place. Not only that, you can also crop out any unwanted scans. But I prefer to reset all the adjustments as it's perfectly in place. So let's go ahead and tap on start planning. Start planning our case. So what we have here is a missing lower right six, tooth number 30. So we're going to go ahead and select that on that arch on the left. So as soon as I selected a tooth on the lower arch, the mandibular curve turns on. And if I did that on the upper arch as well, the maxillary curve will turn on. But we're only concerned with the lower arch. So we're going to go ahead and continue with it. So as soon as I tap on the mandibular curve, you'll find that the panorama curve have been generated automatically using the power of AI. Not only that, you can also do manual adjustments and add your own dots the way you want it to be. So as long as we're planning on the lower arch, of course we need to trace the nerves as well. Right here I'm tracing the nerve the convention or the manual way, but we'll be releasing a new soft new update soon they'll be able to detect that automatically. So I'll not I'll not take much time trying to trace the nerve in the correct position. So it's only for the sake of demonstration. So let's just finish that and go ahead into importing our model, our SDL file. We're going to go ahead and select the required file, which is the mandibular anatomy right here. And as you can see, we support SDL, OBG, and PLY, all the 3D formats available. Okay, so when we open that, we have a quick preview. And what happens when I click on load model? will automatically match with the scan using the power of AI. So this is the, my favorite part, which also, which is also actually not time consuming anymore. You're not going to take so much time trying to rematch or match the model to the scan. As you can see, if we check the 2D views right here, we'll find how accurate and perfectly placed it is. If you check another view right here, perfectly placed. Mm -hmm. 
In case it didn't fall into place, you also have the alternative option which is the conventional way of rematching the model to the scan. And not only that you have we have another feature which is will which which will be helpful as well in case for example if your model is pretty close to the ideal position so all you need to do is step on the three dots right here and tap on select optimize fitting and will optimize the fitting of your model to the scan as you can see it brought it back into place you can also add an antagonist right here so let's add an antagonist mm -hmm. and make it relative to the lower model right here and there we go but of course if we selected a tooth in the upper arch and we're planning on it the upper model word definitely will definitely match with the upper arch of the scan as well. Let's go ahead and move forward to the next step. So let's, before uh, start planning and putting our implant, let's go ahead and add our virtual crown. So we're gonna put that on full screen, hide this call, hide any unwanted model, for example, the maxillary model. And we're gonna go ahead and start placing our crown. So I'd like to start with the occlusal view and selecting the concerned crown right here and start positioning it just like that. Mm -hmm. I guess it looks good this way. Okay, let's go ahead and start adding our implant. We have a lot of available vendors right here, varieties of implant systems that you, I'm sure they will be able to find your system that you're working with. It's all pre-downloaded right here and you can download it all at once. And once you start selecting your implant, you'll find it up there. So I only download a Megagenus Stroman so let's take Stroman as an example right here. I'm placing a 4.1 to 10 as an example right there. I'd like to add it through my panoramic curve and then we'll go ahead and start adjusting from that cross section using the, the option which is centric that puts my implant in a centric position so I can go around it. Mm -hmm. Let's give that a little bit of angulation right here. I guess a bigger diameter will do in that case. Let's just leave it like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. think okay perfect after we, we added our implant we're gonna go ahead and add the sleeve to it so of course once I select the sleeve the very first option that comes up is the sleeve compatible with the system I just selected in the very first place so I selected strum and ball level so of course the sleeve compatible with it the strum and GS so, and this is our different offsets available by Strawman. And of course, the IPC icon right there resembles input placement control. Mm -hmm. So I can hide that. I can also hide that. Mm -hmm. To check my sleeve right here. I can check it through the 2D as well. Mm -hmm. When I'm done with this you can also add generic sleeve which is also might be compatible with the system that you selected let's go ahead save that and last but not least is our report let's generate the report report is pretty informative and gives a brief information about the scan right here from different cross sessions and the plant products which is trauma and the sleeve being used 
along with the bone density, whether it supports IPC, the drill depth control, and not only that, last but not least, is the drilling protocol. This is the drilling protocol you might need to follow to be able to do the right osteotomy to your case. Once you're done with that, you can export that into PDF and sending it out to your colleague or lab or whatever you want to send it to. I'm going to save that. So once we're done with planning, let's go ahead and start designing. So we're going to launch our guide design software right away from here. And it will go ahead and load my plan immediately. As you can see right here, let's hide the maxillary. To start designing the surgical guide, it's pretty easy using our software because you only need to do very, very few simple steps. So all you need to do is to select the model, tap on generate guide, and these are the different parameters that you might need to adjust according, of course, a 3D printer according to the case. But it's set into default settings that you might not be wanting to adjust as well. So as you can see, once I tapped on generate guide, it gives me a brush in hand so I can start highlighting where I want my guide to be seated. Let's say, for example, this is the tooth that I want to include in my surgical guide. And I'll start refining it a little. I can use my scroller wheel and tap on control. And I can start removing. Okay, so as you can see here, detect undercut direction automatically. That means the software will detect the undercut and will block it out immediately without the without positioning the model in my perspective or in which direction I prefer. If I want to do that myself manually, I can uncheck that and start positioning the model in the perspective that I want the undercut to, to be blocked out but I'd, I prefer to use it automatically right now. So let's go ahead and generate a model and a guide. A model with the blocked out undercut will be generated along with the surgical guide, as you can see right now. So this is our surgical guide and this is our model. Pretty simple, pretty easy, very, very few simple steps to be followed. And there you go. You can, let's just add stamping to it. You can add stamping to it. For example, it's right RNA, which is Atomica. By ticking that, it'll be engraved in the guide. And by unticking that, your label will be embossed out the guide, as you can see right here. And once you're done with that, and this is your, this is what you want, you're happy with that guide. And if you want to start exporting that, all you need to do is to tap, right click right here and export. When you export that, you see that you can export into STL file, PLY, OBG, and all you want. Demo guide. There. So that's it. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Thank you for watching.